Pentax 67 medium format camera system. Uh, this is a SLR system, so you can see through the lens uh, as a standard uh, standard DSLRs or electronic viewfinders can provide. Uh, this system is fully analog. Uh, there is a battery, but we will get to that. Uh, as for the focusing, uh, it's kind of standard on the lens using the focusing ring. Aperture setup, again, on the lens using the aperture uh, setup ring uh, we can select the speed on the on the knob on the body and uh, there is a film advance lever uh, on the right side of the camera and a shutter release button uh, again on the right side of the camera after we press the shutter we can advance the film and load the shutter again There is a battery check button because there is a battery inside. Uh, it's built in for electronic control of the shutter speed and it needs to be uh, live. Uh, if the battery is depleted, the camera is not gonna function anymore. So be sure to check that everything is fine. Changing the lens. The lens can be changed uh, quite standardly as uh, any other camera systems you are used to by pressing depressing the lens release button uh, you can rotate and then remove the uh, lens from uh, the bayonet and uh, in the same fashion you can actually put it back on the lens can be put back on by matching the two marks one on the bayonet one on the lens itself once these two uh, marks are aligned the lens can be put into uh, the place and rotated for locking uh, each of the lenses have slightly different markings but uh, they are kind of unmistakable right now we have a 90 millimeter lens uh, on the camera uh, it's a standard lens for the 6x7 system again the focusing aperture ring plus the 90 millimeter lens come with internal shutter the internal shutter is light, slightly tricky to use so i recommend not to use it uh, it is built for studio uh, flash settings so in case you will ever be working with uh, flashlights in a studio and you will need short shutter speed it might be the way to go uh, all the lenses have a switch from manual aperture setup to automatic aperture setup. That actually means that uh, when it's in automatic, which is the default mode, the aperture will be set once you hit the shutter button. Otherwise, it's going to stay open for you to be able to focus and so on. Loading the film. Uh, loading the film is done uh, by opening the back door and uh, you can from the bottom of the camera you can see the uh, knobs uh, for unlocking the spools of the roll film holder now we are gonna unlock the film door and it's gonna open uh, make sure not to hit uh, the part in between the spools uh, with your fingers or hand or any other object uh, because it's super sensitive and it's very easy to damage and if the shutter is damaged, well, the camera is not gonna be of much use anymore. Uh, you can see that the film advance lever is actually rotating uh, these uh, latches or uh, knobs inside, and that's where the empty spool for the film, film reeling will uh, be placed. Right now, the spool is on the left side where it uh, is always left. Uh, by the previous use of the camera we can see that the latch is uh, rotating as we rotate the film uh, advance lever by rotating and pulling out we can unlock uh, these spools we will remove the empty one we will put it on the right side again by rotating and pulling out of the locking mechanism
So flipping out the handle, rotating now, or so rotating and pulling out, and it stays locked in the unlocked position. We can slide the spool in, uh, make sure uh, to get the orientation right. So the slots on the spool should match uh, the rotation of the of the ledge or the slot. And then we will lock it in place, which means again like uh, rotating the locking mechanism and then folding back the handle. Uh, we'll put a roll fill inside. We are working right now with a, a testing 120 film, which is just uh, paper backing at this moment, but the film is going to look just the same. One side is totally black and one side is uh, printed on. Uh, the black side should be always facing the shutter of the camera, so it should be facing inside of the camera. And again, we have the position unlocked, so we will put the new film inside, we will lock it in place, we'll make sure that the film is securely locked in place, and then we will slowly wrap the film and reel it inside, uh, on the other side, onto the empty spool. We will rotate the spool to correct position so that we can see the slot where the uh, uh, film, where the like loading paper should uh, slot in. So we will put it in there and hopefully it's gonna work on the first try. We also need to get rid of any remaining paper tape or anything uh, that could get stuck in the camera before we, we before we load it in there it didn't catch in so we will try again make sure it's flat as possible so that it's gonna stay in slightly better we slot it in there and we slowly and steadily rotate it uh, holding the position of the of the paper and now it's already reeling correctly. So we move it a little bit more and you can see the double sided arrow now which should be pointing to the 120 marker on the inside of the film loading area. So make sure this double sided arrow is pointing to the red uh, arrow next to the number 120. Once it does point there the camera is ready and can be can be closed. So right now we have loaded the film correctly. The camera can be closed and secured. Uh, so make sure that the film door is securely in position. It does not open or flap out in any way. And uh, after that we can finish loading the film by actually like moving it to the position zero. So we will need probably to trigger the shutter at the moment and then we can keep loading the film till it reaches number zero. Once it reaches number zero it's gonna stop automatically. Now it did stop so we are at the number zero at the first frame of our film. There is a total of 10 frames on the 6x7 roll film and uh, we have exposed the first frame, now we are on the second now. So, we can see the numbers on the film number, uh, film frame counter. We can also use the shutter locking uh, option in case we do not want to expose the film by accident we can like slide the locking mechanism on the shutter to the right and then it's gonna be locked and any uh, real shutter releases will be prevented so right now we have set up the shutter speed, we have properly set up the aperture and focused and we can uh, shoot the frame. And then we will need to load another one and load the shutter at the same time by uh, 
actuating the um, film advanced lever. Mirror preflip function. If in case we are using tripod for shooting, we might want to get rid of the mirror vibrations, which are kind of massive in the Pentax 67 system. And there is a, a button or a switch for the actual like mirror preflip. So in at the moment we press, uh, we depress this uh, mirror flip switch. The mirror flips up, and there is no image visible anymore through the viewfinder. And on the the second step is to press the shutter, which actually triggers the shutter itself. So once again, pre-flip, shutter, and then again we can advance to next frame. Uh, that's the uh, that's the way uh, it is. So now we are slowly moving through the film, shooting images, setting of course aperture, speed and focusing for each frame. Once we reach number 10, the last frame of our film, we are gonna shoot it and after that it's gonna let us uh, to advance the film till the end, to simply spool it, uh, like reel it all onto the onto the right spool, onto the exposed film spool. Film removal. We are gonna open the film door again, but we really need to be sure that the film is fully uh, fully on the right side, fully reeled onto the right spool. Then we can open the film door we can rotate and pull out, therefore unlocking the, the film reel, uh, film spool. Then we can fish it out from the camera, which might or might not be easy or not. And when it's safely and uh, securely out of the camera, we need to flip or fold uh, the paper backing a bit so that it can be uh, later unpacked without much problem and then we will use the included tape to securely wrap it and store it in uh, cool and uh, dark conditions if possible. The empty spool stays in the camera so that it can later be used again on the other side for another, uh, another film we can close the door, the film door. Without the film, the camera is not gonna function, so there is a, a no testing of the camera without the film actually possible. Shift lens. The Pentax 67 system comes uh, with uh, shift lens available in the booking system. The shift lens is a lens that can actually move its axis in one or multiple directions. In this case, it's in one direction. Uh, otherwise, it can be focused, the aperture can be set and so on and so on. Uh, the system is pretty much the same as using the regular lens. So we will put it on the camera by matching the, uh, the points. When they are matched, we can like lock it into the bayonet, into the ring. We will rotate it slightly more than with the regular lenses so that it securely locks in place. We can also notice that there is a red dot and green dot. The green dot signifies uh, the direction of the axis in which the lens shifts. So in case we are gonna shift sideways, we need the red dot to point sideways. In case we need to shift vertical, and the green dot is gonna point uh, vertical, uh, either up or down, where, wherever we, we, we need to shift. The shift lenses are mostly used for shooting architecture, uh, but they can be used for uh, shooting anything that needs to have their perspective intact. Uh, the shift lens also has uh, this sort of uh, aperture limiter because the aperture is not linked 
Therefore, when you press the shutter release button, uh, the lens is not gonna close to the specified aperture. We need to close it down manually for that. And of course, with closed lens, it's not possible to like focus or actually like view through the lens. So you need to have an option to be able to switch in between fully open lens and whatever aperture you are gonna be using for the actual shooting. So the outer ring, the one on the top right now, is for the actual setup of the aperture. That's the limiter. So we are gonna set up what aperture we are going to shoot with. In this case, f32 and uh, or f11 and a half. And the bottom ring is gonna be for uh, for us to be able to see at the aperture 4.5 through the camera and focus and uh, then to close it down before the actual picture so that uh, the exposure is correctly set up. I hope uh, everything was kind of clear. If there is uh, anything unclear, feel free to contact me. Don't be afraid to ask any question. Of course, you can also consult the PDF manual, which is available on the link provided by the QR code above. Thank you for uh, listening up to this point. And that's it. Thanks.